Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate website, Close out Facebook, put away Twitter, and go to www.thelandgeek.com because I've got another special treat this week. That's right. Your favorite podcasting guest, living the dream in Carlsbad, California. He just got done playing basketball. I have literally no sympathy for any problems this has. This guy has in life. Duran Frazier! Reserveland.com, landhub.com. Duran, what's going on? Nothing much, Mark. Just um, trying. Oh, God, I said um again. I see I'm trying to fix that problem because when I get in front of the microphone and I say um at our conference, we're going to have a problem. So, anyway, I uh, just got done playing some basketball and uh, there we go again. I I got some exercise today. So, my my head is empty and ready to go uh, to go another six hours uh, into work mode. Great, great. So, speaking of exercise, I'm getting really good now working out, getting up. First thing I do in the morning is my workout. I feel great. But you see, but you're an afternoon guy. Like you get up and like, what do you do when you wake up? I get up at about 1030 each morning. I'll make some eggs, have some OJ, kick back my feet on the table, watch some ESPN for about an hour and a half, go to the basketball gym, play some basketball, come back and then work for, I'm just totally joking people. I'm up at about 530 every morning. And I, the first thing I do, we talked about it in, in prior podcasts is that I We'll go through my emails first thing in the morning, kind of get everything done for the past, you know, 20, you know, 12 hours. Right. I, I'll, I'll have emails. So I've got a, I've got a couple of employees right now in uh, the Philippines. And so I'm kind of monitoring what they're doing and their progress. And, and they're doing a lot of work and I'm paying them a lot of money, but they're developers. And so it's a little bit of a challenge to kind of walk, you know, have that, have that, that time issue with them being over there. I think it's about 13 hours ahead, but it works out. So then it goes in the morning and I kind of help my wife with the kids and then, you know, take my time between, I would say, you no know, nine o'clock and noon and work my butt off and then spend an hour playing basketball and then back to work. Wow. I love it. I love it. I'd, I'd be, I'd be curious how many of our listeners work out in the afternoon. I know Tori in Utah does. So he's a big afternoon workout guy, but he's, he's, he's crazy. He's, yeah. he's like older than we are and like shredded. So really? he's, he, yeah, uh, yeah, he's, he's a serious workout fanatic. You, have you not seen me with my shirt off? I have. I have um, a six, I have, I have a six pack. You've got a two, on. you've got a two pack on, your, two on pack a good, on a good day. Yep. Um, no, I'm, uh, I'm back. You know, I, I don't even know if the listeners know this, but over the last seven months, I'm sure we've mentioned it. I'm down about 17 or 18 pounds. I look like a, I, I could have been a fullback for the San Diego chargers at one point. I was a big <laughs> boy, but, uh, and I was still, I was still pretty strong, but I, I, and I was doing push-ups every day, but then I decided to cut out gluten for a while. And um, 17, 17 pounds later, I feel pretty good. So. That's great. I, by the way, I love gluten. I had mm. three, I had three cupcakes last night, and I felt great about it. It had been like two weeks since I had any sugar since I was you know, itchy, and I went you know, crazy. They, they say you are what you eat, Mark, and you actually look like a cupcake. Thank you. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I can say to that is thank you. So... Before we get into the meat of what we're going to discuss today, which is going to be dealing with land brokers, I did want to talk about Vegas for a sec. So the last podcast we did say, oh yeah, March 22nd, 23rd. Don't book that yet because that date is most likely going to change now into April. So it's still tentative, but there will be the Land Geek Seminar. Duran will definitely be there, right? Uh, like I said, you gotta let me see, let me know the dates are. But yes, most likely I will. Which really funny. Not most likely, you're committing to it. Okay, I'm there. I'll be there. Oh I'll, my gosh. I'll be there, folks. This is I, this I, is why it's hard to do business with anybody in California. Yeah, yeah most likely. Like the, you're, you're like one of those LA flaky people. It depends on the swell. If there's some waves, I can't come. If it it depends on the swell. <laughs> hey, listen. I was gonna tell you what's really funny is you 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 get you give me that date within 24 hours. I got invited to two other engagements on the 22nd of March. And I have nothing literally like three weeks prior and three weeks after nothing really going on yet. 
in the calendar, and that weekend, for whatever reason, is popular. That's so, a hot. That's a hot weekend. Must must be. But it's going to work out for you because you're not going to have to go. Okay. All okay. right. So I want to I want to tell the story about this deal. Do you mind? Which deal? The deal I was telling you about earlier about uh, in uh, Nevada. Oh, okay. Go. Is it your deal or my deal? My deal. Oh, of my course. Deal. Go ahead. Okay. Hear. So this land broker that I absolutely love brings me this deal, and. She's like, you know, she wants to, she wants to ram it through, right? She's like, look, they want one hundred forty-five thousand. They'll take a hundred thousand cash, thirty-day close. You know, you can subdivide it down into quarter-acre lots. That's one hundred forty-eight lots. You know, like, like the math worked out. It was going to come out to like two fifty a lot. I'm like, oh yeah, let me look, let me look at that deal. So I start doing the due diligence on the deal, right? Can't get water. <laughs> there's, there's like it's like on the border of the waterline. Can't get water. It's a total paper subdivision, right? There's legal access. There's no physical access. There's no roads. There's no street signs. It's just a big paper subdivision. Again, is it, like, is it already? Is it already? Is it already been a paper subdivision, or is it? Is it something you'd have to create? No, no, it's already been created. So there's already quarter acre lots. No, no, they're, you have to subdivide them down into quarters. She's like, they're like, they're like seven acre lots, but within those seven acre lots, there's like blocks, right? So it's like a subdivision within those seven acres. You know you what I'm saying? So to, to, just so you know, I've, I've gone, I've gone very far in that process to, to, to subdivide anything less than 40 acres. You know, there's a, there's a, they want some crazy improvements in Nevada. Oh no, it's millions of dollars. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah. okay. So these improvements aren't there. That they yeah. would need, and yeah. she's she's like, let's get this thing done. So I start doing more due diligence. I I revised my offer. I say, look, Kathy, there's a there's a way for me to make money on this deal. Look, I can I can blade roads. We don't have to do we don't have to subdivide them down to half acres. We can sell them into five acre lots or acre lots without doing any of these million dollar improvements in Humble County, right? You know, what my offer was we went from a hundred thousand. I offered twelve thousand five hundred. For hundred, this is for one hundred and forty-five acres. That's what that deal was worth, and that's how it. That's the only way I could make money on that deal. And she started laughing. She's like, "I have to make ten thousand dollars commission on this deal." I'm like, "Take your ten thousand. The sellers can have twenty five hundred dollars because literally they're trying to sell worthless property." There, I asked uh, John, the surveyor, yeah, what, what the highest and best use was for this for this area. He started laughing. He's like, highest and best use. He's like, man, I, he's like, I don't know. Fly, fly remote control airplanes? Yeah, he's like, I'm like, because you, you, you can't build on it. And uh, it, it was a total, it was a total, you know, nightmare. So I just thought that was interesting. Like, she really wanted to get this thing done. Let's open up escrow today. And, you know, you start doing the due diligence. Like, whoa, yeah. that's a really ugly deal. Yeah. And, have, and have you had any of those experiences? I have actually, I was, I was, uh, I was put a deal together about two years ago, year and a half, two years ago. It was a pretty, pretty large deal. It was about 2,500 acres. And, um, the buyers, the buyers made an offer through, I, I, I had listed this property with a, with a broker okay. and the broker basically came back to me and goes, Hey, I got an offer on the table. Here it is. And we broke down the numbers. I had a, I had a loan on the property. So there was a payoff involved and at the at the end of the payoff, I didn't make a dime. So meaning I didn't get any money out of the deal except for a long term, uh, you know, I carried back a note. So I thought to myself, okay, well, in, in that situation, I'm okay. But then the realtor said I need to make my, you know, twenty five thousand dollar commission. I said, well, great, I'll pay you cash twelve grand or whatever, twelve thousand, you know, whatever, twelve thousand five hundred bucks, whatever, whatever it was, to uh, to get him fifty percent of his money up front, and then we keep, I'd make him carry back a note, right? Stop because I'm carrying back all the, the entire note and not not taking any money up front. That he would work on that with me. And long story short, is it didn't happen, and he he wouldn't he wouldn't be flexible, and I, and I wasn't willing to put the deal together. You know, in hindsight, it was probably kind of a silly move for me, but at the same time, I'm dropping. I'm dropping, you know, 25 cash out of my pocket um, to to make the deal work so that the agent gets paid. And it just didn't make sense to me. So, but here I am, I've got an offer, a really good offer on the table. Right. And and and, and the agent or the broker sort of got in the way of the deal. Yeah, that yeah, that's terrible when that happens. So, so and and that's one and of the, Yeah, they can't do that though, right? Legally. 
legally they're not supposed to do that. Correct. You know, their fiduciary responsibility to their client, uh, and 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 a commission is not supposed to get get in the way of a deal. So I think the, the the dilemma there is I get that he has to make money, but at the same time you have to sort of get creative, right? That's how land works. And um, so it it, it it leads us sort of in that conversation of of when it's beneficial to have a land broker and when it's when it's not beneficial to have a land broker. And you as you as you see as you as you get involved in in this program at March program, you'll see that that there's not there's a lot of times where you can do a lot of this marketing on your own and not have to use a land broker. But there are certain times when you find the right deal. Maybe you find, uh, you know, maybe, maybe. You, well, you, bi- bigger, uh, bigger deals. I think you correct. should use a land broker. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. But not, not, not always either. And I'll tell you why, like, like here's a, for instance, I just closed the deal and I told, we, you know, we discussed it, closed a hundred thousand dollar deal uh, where I, I basically did all the marketing and I didn't, but it was on the MLS and it was. Wait, which hundred thousand dollar deal? We talked about it. One of one of one of those one of those projects in uh, one of those properties in uh, Leonard County. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I remember that one. So um, you have so, so many hundred thousand dollar deals; they're hard to keep track of, buddy. Oh, stop it. So, anyways, we we close a deal, and I, all of it was done through me. I handle everything, every aspect of it. And most of the time, the, the thing about a land broker is they don't really know the property like you know the property. You bought it, you did the due diligence, you understand the property. You can't convey the entire message to a broker, and you can't expect them to answer the questions. And most of the time. When they get somebody, that, when they get a lead, they're not gonna they're not gonna contact you for to answer questions. They're gonna try and figure it out on their own instead sure. of having to bother, bother you because that's what they want to do. They don't want to call you. They want to be the you know quote unquote smart realtor or smart broker and know the information. So they're gonna go find it and they may they may actually pass on wrong information. So uh, and that's one of the things that I found with some of these brokers. So I, I have some stuff. I mean I have I have larger projects listed with brokers. You know you know, anywhere from 600 acres to, you know, a couple thousand acres with brokers. And I have other stuff that I, I would just, you know, smaller stuff and some of the, some of the bigger stuff that I won't list with brokers because I know that I can do a better job of selling it. And most people that are looking for land generally don't go to the MLS to find it. So, so it's, and so it's always know when you're looking at these deals, whether you're putting options together. And of course, if you're putting an option on a big property, you know, talk to the brokers, call them up, ask them questions. You know, find out if it's even worth their time. Find out if the market's moving in a certain direction. Well, hey. well that, that's the thing, what you just said, worth their time, right? Yep. So most yep. of these smaller deals aren't worth a land broker's time. Exactly. They don't want it. They don't want, you know, like Kathy doesn't want a $10,000 commission on this deal. She wants to do a million dollar ranch and make, yeah. Yeah, but you Kathy, know what I mean? She wants to make $30,000, $50,000. Kathy, Kathy probably lives in Winnemucca somewhere. And, and No, no, she lives in Reno. She's got overhead. She's got uh, horses. There's no, overhead. there's no overhead in Reno. Come on, buddy. Yeah, well, and, not not like your overhead. <laughs> it's not ocean overhead. But, but I will say, I will say that that a ten grand commission is a pretty good commission. No, no, look, it's better than sh- like it's better than a sharp stick in the eye. But she's not going to look for those deals. That's why she came to me. Like yeah. she's like, oh, I'll go to Mark, quick close. I'll get my quick ten grand, and you know he likes this kind of stuff. He doesn't mind a, a little deal, a, a deal with a little hair on it. Yeah. you know he's not afraid of it. Yeah, um, which is look, that's our niche. We like these kinds of deals, but we're not going to overpay for them. Of course, you know. I mean, I can I can handle a deal that I, I've got to blade roads into. That's yeah. fine. You know, that's not going to scare me. What scares me is the price they wanted for it. Yeah, yeah, and and that's and that's one of the things going back to sort of that that risk averse mentality. Mark, Mark and I don't take no for an answer. So if if you tell Mark and I that we can't do something, we're going to figure it. We're going to figure out how to do it. And that's that's the mentality you need to have when you go into buying buying land is that you know or or anything is just that don't take no for an answer you know figure it out yourself right well, it, well yeah and, that, and that's what I think where a good land broker can kind of help a newbie too yeah. because they can help you they've seen okay well why don't why don't we structure like this if you want to do it like that way you know like they 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 can you know a good creative land broker can add some value there do you agree with that no I do but but if you're talking about a five thousand dollar piece of land. Or ten thousand dollar piece of land is it is it worth your time? So here here's generally and just so the listeners know, uh, you're you're gonna structure a deal that even if you sold the property, you're still gonna have to pay a commission. So right, it's it's gonna cut into your margins if you end up listing it and selling it yourself. You're still gonna pay five percent to the to the broker. Uh, and I have a couple of these deals together where I've gotten inquiries on my land and and almost put some deals together, and I would have had to pay my broker. Twenty thousand bucks. Well, I, you know what? I I like to play the game. Who sells it first, right? Yeah. So I I might list it with a broker, and and I'll say, look, let's play the game. 
By the way, you've got to give a broker an exclusive, don't you think? Because if you don't give them the exclusive, they won't work it at all. What do you think yeah. of that? Of course. Yeah. But, uh, but a lot of people, you know, they're like, okay, I'll give it to you and I'll give it to you and I'll give it to you. And then no one works their deal. No, I, I, I only give it to, I'll find the best person in the area. Uh, like the best way to find out and here, and just so you guys all know, the best strategy is search the area where you have your land and then, and then, and then uh, broker. And then the person that comes up number one has probably done some SEO work on their website and ranks well. And so if somebody's searching land in that area, they're going to go to their site first. So they're probably going to see your property. So right. it makes sense to do a little bit of a Google search to find out who is the number one land broker in Elko, Nevada, and then go talk to the guy and see if it's worth his time or see if it makes sense or see if he has buyers or see where the market is. So, and those people will talk to you. You don't, you know, being a, being a newbie sometimes, you know, better than being a guy that knows, knows something because they want to help people. And generally when you know something that, you know, you, you end up saying something and, and you shoot yourself in the foot and, and the broker doesn't want to talk to you anymore. Right. So, right. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the wealthiest land guys I know always plays dumb. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a, uh, what's that? No, I don't. <laughs> Besides you. <laughs> remember the, remember the rice farmer? Yes. Ron? Ron? I'm not going to say he his plays, last name. He plays worse. Ron, Ron's worth half a billion dollars. Ron he's like, I, he inherited it, Mark. Come on. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He's, he's, he's big. He inherited rice farms. He, no, he, okay. Maybe he, all right. Maybe he was born on third base, but he hit a home run. Dude, Trump no, did the same no, thing. He, he bunted. He bunted and got home. He did That's not bunt and get home. Oh man, he's aggressive. He works hard. That guy. Anyways, his, but his whole thing is, oh, I'm just a dumb old rice broker. I don't know much. And anyways, he's doing like these crazy multi million dollar deals and and um, scams. Well, I don't. You know, <laughs> that's why I'm not going to say his last name. Just, I I don't think he's. A, do you think he's a scam guy? No, he's not. I'm I'll tell you what, he, 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 he referred us to a guy. He, he did. He definitely was, almost got us. He almost got us both in trouble for yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. He was pretty aggressive tax wise. I yes. think that's what you're referring to. Yes. His tax what, strategy I'm, was very aggressive. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. So that's not here or there. <laughs> Let, let's, you know what? For the listeners, if you uh, get referred to somebody that tells you that you're going to pay 2% or 3% in income taxes, uh, that should be a red flag. And if he says he's an attorney and a CPA, and, yeah, just, yeah, just, check his background. just yeah, follow your gut on that stuff. Because <laughs> Mark, Mark didn't, and I did. <laughs> I didn't. I got, I got wrapped up. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. And uh, yeah, I, I sniffed that one out while we were at dinner. Yeah, that's look. That's why we make a good team. Exactly. So, anyways, going back, going back to brokers. Um, you know, again, you want, you want it. You want to make it make sense to a broker if you've got a deal, and if it's if it's a, yeah. But how do you know if it makes sense to a broker? They you just talk. ask them. Yeah, you talk to them. Okay, and they're going to say yeah, of course. But no, they're, they're, then they're not, not going to work the deal. No, they're not. Why would it, why would a land broker say hey, I'll take an eight thousand dollar deal? It's not worth the time to take eight. Wait, you know what, sir? I've, I've got eight thousand other properties here. Oh, people ask me to do it for eight grand. Yeah, grand. They'll take it for eight thousand dollar deal because they'll throw it up on their website and see what happens. And I not have to do anything else. I've had many They'll put up on land hub. I've had many brokers say, Hey, you know what? And I, you know what? Here, here's the difference between me and me and Mark. I'm going to ask him straight out. Are you going to be able to sell this property? Is oh, this a, oh, okay. You, they won't lie to you. Is this an aggressive price? Come on, Mark. I don't You know what? I have nothing against brokers. And honestly, I think it's one of the toughest professions out there because of the lack of control. There's so many variables that a broker can't control. Yeah. And, and, uh, and they're trying to, you know, Work on all, work on that deal, and get that thing closed so they get their commission. It's a, it's really a tough way. And look, I've done it. I mean, I was a business broker, I was a dental broker, uh, and, and you know what I, you know what I learned from that experience? Be the no. prince, be the principal. Yes. Be, 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 on, be on one end of the deal. Don't be the middle guy, because yeah. that, that, that's rough. You know, you get your commission squeezed. You know, egos get involved. You can, you can get, you know, you can work months on a project, a year on a project and watch it go uh, and fall out. So yeah. if, if you're doing it as a, and you're making your living that way, fantastic. Good for you. Cause yeah. it, that's a, that's a tough way to go. And those, the, I have a lot of respect for the, for the uh, real estate brokers. And there's, and there, well, here's the best part. There's no competition. Or, yeah, and it's not competitive <laughs> at all. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if it were easy, everyone would do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, we're not going to make fun of brokers because we're not, we're, we're, I'm not making, am I making fun of brokers? No, it's just I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not making fun of brokers. I, I honestly do believe that it's, it's a very, very tough way to make a good, a good living. But, and, and there's a lot of people that do it. And I, I think that's great. And I think it, you know, I do know a lot of people that do it part time and they make money on the side, which is great. Yeah. Which, which is, which is great. But you know, that's the way it used to be like residential realtors. It was like, you know, bored housewives yeah. got into it. Now, I mean, it's, it's, it's big time. It's a business. Now, now you know, the housewives aren't bored. Now the housewives aren't bored anymore. That's right. Because <laughs> there's Facebook now. <laughs> oh boy. And, Lou, and Lululemon. And Lululemon. Yes. Exactly. Uh, so anyways, Mark, yeah, you know, I think, I think going back to it, I think the, the, the strategy and idea with land is, and is to understand what, what you have and ask questions, but also, you know, that there, there's a, there's a term, um, just Google it, but they, they put a very nasty word in front of that, but there's actually like a, what, what is it? What is the term they use? Um, J F G I. And I think it stands for just using the F word and then it, it, Google it. And, oh. and that's, that's a term that's used. And I, I don't, I don't like that, but, but, but when you have, when you have something or a que when you have a question about land or something, search, search, the Google has more information than the broker's going to have. It's just how you, you, your question is, how do you find it? So, right now? Yeah. And you know, but that being said, I definitely think they're value. They're very valuable, but not necessarily on, 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 on our niche, but certainly in residential real estate, yeah. I, I don't see technology ever taking that role of that relationship because I, I can't, I can't go to somebody's house and, and, you know, say what I really want, really, what I really think about someone's house without that filter. And that broker acts as that filter and that agent for you so that you can, you can get a deal done and not hurt the other party. Well, what Redfin, what Redfin and Zillow are trying to do right now is basically change that. So that, that pe humans are involved, but humans aren't paid commission. Humans are paid a salary to go in basically and, and help people. And so they're, 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 the commission aspect is still there right now, but the, Zillow and Redfin are out to change and Trulia are out to change that whole concept. Because let's, let's be honest, in, in a place like Scottsdale or San Diego, when a house sells for a million bucks, right. and, you've got, and you've got to pay you know, 60000 for commission, right? You know, if there's comps in the area, I mean, at, at the end of the day, are you gonna are you gonna lose sixty grand because you put the deal together yourself? Well, if there's comps in the neighborhood and a buyer's willing to spend a certain amount of money, um, and you know, I I, I just look at it and go, gosh, sixty grand is so much money for commission, and uh, even thirty grand, you know, you know, well, it, it, yeah, yeah, it is, but they, you know, but it needs to be that because they take so much risk. They might they may do ten deals and have and, and they all fall out at certain stages because it doesn't it doesn't appraise. Their buyer can't get financing. I mean, they've got to get compensated for the it's a risk reward ratio. Yeah. I, I don't like the way they're compensated in the sense like their their fiduciary responsibility is kind of to the deal and not to any one party. Do you agree with that? Yes, but I, I you know I just think I mean you can mitigate a lot of that risk because you can prequal them, you know, so they get prequalified. You can you can learn a lot of this stuff in a in a two hour conversation. Yeah, a prequal is not a qual. Oh wow, Mark. You're right. It's not a, you know what? <clears throat> yep. And the moon is black. You know what, dude? Here's the deal. Here's the deal dude. I, all, all I'm saying is, <laughs> wow. All I'm trying to say, Mark, is that, is that a lot of these, I just don't, I think that agents and you know, people may get mad at me and say, you know what? That's not true. Look, I think a lot of agents work for, and uh, work hard for the commission. I just think in places like San Diego in places where a, a commission. Yeah. Is but you know, you know what's going to happen is they're going to work three months on that deal, right? Three months going back and forth, trying to keep that. It's like, it's like, you know, juggling these. What are you talking about? I'm it's hard. It's hard. It's, it's a hard to be a broker. And then, no, and then, listen, and then you know what happens? We can't do this deal unless you cut your commission. Unless you cut your commission, we can't do this deal. Stop for a second. Okay, look, I understand that if you're in, in uh, you know, the uh, the the suburbs uh, of Phoenix and there's a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home and your commission is only forty five hundred bucks, okay, it's a different situation. That to me is worth it, right? Forty five, five, six grand. When you start talking about 15, 20, 25, 30 grand to put the same deal together, meaning oh my God. I, I hate this argument. Fine. You know what? Then 
then you shouldn't make a hundred thousand dollars on your deal. You're right. I'm not even going to bring up the mining deal. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, are you kidding me? They well, make what they make because of the risk. They make what they make because of the risk. They go out there and they want to play in, in, in the most competitive landscape and get a million dollar listing and they close it. I think they deserve their 6%. Absolutely. Okay. You may have to erase this podcast one day. Um, Okay, because may maybe you're right. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you're right that. that no, see, the, when I brought up the mining thing, now I, I hit a nerve. No, you didn't hit a nerve at all. I, I that's that's one of those things where you have a golden horse, you stuck up your butt, and it just comes to fruition. It's, 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 <laughs> it's not true, Duran. You took so much risk. You took so much risk. Okay, I just don't see it as it. I mean, you you mitigate risk by having errors and emissions insurance as an agent. Like all these things are you're protected by. So it's like. What the real Arizona risk is missions. Come on. Yeah, it's risky. It's just risky to deal with two. It's a very emotional transaction. That's the risk involved. I, I agree. I agree. You know, you, got, you might have to show that buyer 50 homes before they're like, Oh yeah, I like this one. You get down to the one yard line and then the seller backs out or yeah. we, or, or the, there's some kind of, you know, repair that needs to be done. The seller's like, I'm not going to repair it. And the buyer's like, well, if you're not going to repair it. Then I'm not going to deal with you. Bye bye. $60,000 commission. Wow. I mean, that's that's a very delicate transaction. Yep. And you know what? And that's why land brokers, for the most part, will take a minimum of 10%, by the way. Yeah. They don't they don't take less than 10%. So it, it is pretty expensive. But that's why they only, they only want to do larger deals. So 90, 95 to 99% of my deals are done without a land broker. What about you? I would say now, I would say about... 80% of my deals. So are done with that are done with a land broker. I do quite a bit these days with listing property with land brokers, but I'm also dealing with bigger projects. Okay. That makes sense. All right. I we're mean, getting down, we're getting down to that time. What is, what did you like? Right. That, you, do you like that? that? That was a pretty abrupt <laughs> segue okay. there. We're yeah, getting down to that time. Okay. Yeah. Did we, did we, did we cover land brokers enough? Hold on. I just realized Mark, how many people that that jump on these on these masterminds and some of your clients are agents? Dude, they're going to be like, dude, this guy's a you jerk. Know, yeah. Why? Why? I'm I'm defending them. Okay. You're the okay. one. You're the one going yeah, after their big commissions. They're your clients. I'm no, defending I, them. I'm saying it's a very tough gig. I, it is a tough gig, but you know what? You are so politically correct. It makes me sick. Why is it? Why am I being politically correct? That's how I. I, I that is not politically correct. If that I want to be politically correct, correct, I wouldn't even mention agents because I'm sure I'm going to get some. Uh, some fan mail that's not fan mail. Well, you have a, you, for everyone that's not, can't see Mark right now, he has a sport coat on and a dress shirt. And he's talking to something that looks like something that, that uh, Miley Cyrus would be singing into right now. So for me, I just sit here in my little t-shirt and I'm not professional and I just speak my mind. So the difference is Mark should be running for office and, and I would just vote for him. Yeah. Everybody watches the coffee talk videos. I'm wearing the coffee talk coat and shirt. Um, and I can't tell you guys how pleased I am that Duran's actually wearing a shirt. <laughs> Half the time he doesn't even put on a shirt and I've got, I've got to look at him. <laughs> and then sometimes we'll move his pecs up and down and it's very distracting. Okay. What we, we talked, we, we talked enough about land brokers. Um, what is your tip of the day? My tip of the day is I'm, we're going back to organization here and I'm, I'm, I, I like to be an organized person. Uh, so I, there's a, there's a website that we've we haven't it's called Recall and it's spelled R E Q A L L Recall. Recall I love it I I actually used Recall at one point and I stopped using it for some reason it's basically just helps you get organized uh, helps you with your daily life from the morning till the evening puts things into perspective a little bit so that's a uh, my tip of the day nothing too fancy just it's all about staying organized I love it I love it all right great tip okay my tip of the week is um, stock images. So sometimes when you're doing your marketing, um, whether it be a landing page, a website, even your own uh, ad, you might need a stock image here and there. And they can get really expensive really fast if you go to one of those um, paid for stock image services. Uh, so I found a site called S as in Sam, X as in Xavier, C is in Charlie, XSC dot H U. And it's free stock images. And uh, it's pretty good. 
the only thing that happens when you go there is that you get a you get a virus in your computer and when you get <laughs> crashes you call mark <laughs> if it, if that's true i'll give everybody duran's email and cell phone number and uh he's he's a tech whiz so no i'm i am the geek i am the land geek for a reason and i have vetted the site you will not get a virus thanks for <laughs> for, for putting that in their minds duran <laughs> appreciate that so all right i think uh are we good are you good i got some more yelling to do do you want to start some more problems let's 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 yell next week okay i, I got i got to get on the call here all right so if you want to learn more go to www.thelandgeek.com download for free the passive income blueprint get the ebook how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes and of course get this podcast delivered each week into your email inbox. Duran is lonely. Half the time he doesn't even have a shirt on. So let's give Duran <laughs> some love. Let's just clarify. And go to reserveland.com, acquire or invest in some wholesale land. If Duran doesn't have anything you want, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com and, uh, and give me some love. Anyways, uh, send us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Any topics you'd like to hear discussed, any questions, any tips, um, let us know and certainly, you know, rate us on iTunes. It really helps. This is Mark Podolsky, the land geek with Duran Frazier saying, make it an extraordinary week. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Duran. Thank you for listening to another episode of the land geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with the land geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash the land geek.